Did you know that fucking John lost like a gajillion pounds? Yeah, I did, you, I did keto. I was like almost 400 pounds. And Good for like, you, thank dude. You, buddy. Thank you That's very much. Dope. We met each other at our fattest. Wow. <laughs> we That's both fair. met each other at our fattest points of our lives. Yeah, no. yeah. After he started like walking all the time, I was like, yeah, it might be time. I was like, David inspired me to like, because we were doing Send Foods and I was like. Very inspiring this guy, yeah. man. In five, four, three, two, one. Como estas, everybody? Oh. Hola. Eh, putang inamo. <laughs> Don't ever forget. We have a very special guest on this podcast oh, wow. today. If you don't oh, know wow. who the fuck this is, you will know. Where have you been? If you have watched any Sen Foods, mm. if you have watched Dudes Behind the Foods, oh. if you watched any of Tim's sketches, if you watched uh, uh, the Wine and Weed podcast, but we don't talk about them because John's not on it anymore. <laughs> all right? So fuck him. Yeah, all right? Fuck him. I'm down like that. Yeah. Mr. I don't even, well, I forgot his name, but he's on that show with Rob Durdick. I don't know you, homie, but fuck you. Yeah, all right? that's right. And if you want to catch these hands, probably not. <laughs> and next up, we got Nick Hi. the Ear. Hello, hello, the hello. The virus himself. The virus. Yes, the man from Taiwan with the bombs. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, I mean, it is. It is hands. No, no, the bombs here. It, the yes, bomb press. the bomb press yeah, is yeah, right yeah, there, yeah. baby. <laughs> John, how are you? I'm well, man. Thank you for having me. So how John is usually always behind the camera, but if you guys don't know, on the Wine and Weed podcast, John actually played a played a, a pretty big role. He was a host, mm. and he also mm -hmm. shot all their videos. Yeah, yeah, behind the camera, and it was sometimes at the same time. We did live shows. I had to like run the camera, be in the show, and like low-key shoot the show at the same time. What? How oh the fuck God, did you do crazy. that? Sounds stressful. By <laughs> running around a lot. <laughs> and guess what? He's not on the show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's a real professional. Exactly. <laughs> you don't need that he, show He got anymore. treated like shit, and yeah. that's why he's gone, all right? Fucking <laughs> 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 John and all his business. <laughs> that's right. I, I had a falling out, and it was really yeah, you know bad. What? John, if you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gripe number one. <laughs> All right, let's yeah, let's do it right now. I don't give a fuck about my connections. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Yeah, I mean, what? What? what I think uh, we right, started talk, now. So dude. listen, <laughs> we already started. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I'm a little drunk. I don't give a this fuck. Is the, honestly, this is where David shines when he's a little bit drunk <laughs> yeah. because he says wild stuff, but it's fun. And it's always lighthearted. So that's why David's the man. Here, here's the thing, man. <laughs> this is what I don't like, right? And, you know, I don't mind talking about this because I think a lot of people don't appreciate production as much as they should. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because I have been on both ends. I've been a side of production. I've worked as a PA. I've worked on film. And I've also been in front of the camera. So I understand how fucking hard this job is. And a lot of the time when it comes to talent, they think that they know what production does, but you have no fucking idea no how hard idea. it is, right? They undervalue production. They don't They don't care about the work and the time that it takes to get it. But when they don't get the product that they want, they go, why the fuck is this wrong? Well, if you, you get what you pay for is what you get, mm -hmm. right? So I think a lot of the times when people come into like some of these low budget productions, they expect the Ari Alexa, the for red sure. Komodo type of footage, yep. but they got a Canon 7D type of budget. That's my camera, bro. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later. That's my camera, shit. dog. Right? Fuck. <laughs> and so, you know, when, when John told me that, you know, he decided to leave from this production, this was what the situation is. It's like, it's not so much a representation of people being bad. It's just you don't, if you haven't walked a mile in somebody else's shoes, specifically when it comes to this job, mm -hmm. you don't understand how hard it is. And so mm -hmm. when I found out that John wasn't on that podcast, this is what that situation is. It's not a reflection of who these people are as people. I don't mm -hmm. know them like that. Mm -hmm. But from what I've seen, it's a, a reflection of somebody not understanding what this job entails. Mm -hmm. John, step in there. Ooh. Oh, wow. Sent, sent in the stage. Well, more than <laughs> anything, the biggest problem was that they were looking for someone who was like, oh, I need to be here. You guys are doing me a favor. Mm. But I'm just like, no, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just here because I was asked to be here, you know, and it became something else. And I thought I was a bigger part of it, but I, mean, I guess what I wasn't. So you did, you feel, did you feel very like underappreciated? Definitely towards <clears throat> the end. There was a lot of times where I'm just, you know, um, like my suggestion wouldn't uh, really reach all the way, you know, I would just be like, okay, I'm along for the ride, you know? And then uh, I was just kind of happy to get whatever I got. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I just started off just being a person just to shoot it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they were testing out, like, the vibes and just like, where well, we're going to have a guest. So let's have John sit in for one episode to test out that guest, you know, relationship. 
And then we just, it just worked. The chemistry worked. I was kind of like keeping the podcast like timing and I'm like, all right, here's the structure. Let's move on to the next thing now. And then uh, it's kind of evolved. Yeah. Yeah. I, but, I'll tell you this though. I did not like the emails, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got some yeah. long emails? Yeah. They are uh, like, I was just randomly like the first time that like, in my opinion that I like actually was just like, no, hold on. Let me stand my ground really quick. That's right. I like sent an email and then it was just like, oh no, okay. It's okay. We don't really need you next. Uh, you know, it's just like, oh, we don't need your services anymore. And I was just like, oh, oh shit. Okay. Just like that. Which kind of sucks, you know? right? Because it's it's not, and the reason why I say that sucks. And once again, I don't, I don't know these people personally, but there's a certain level of decorum that you should have, especially when it comes to people who work with you, you know? Because mm, John's yeah. position in the comp in, in their podcast wasn't a situation of just they you work with them. You were a part of the podcast. Mm -hmm. You had opinions, you had conversations, you were yeah. in front of the camera. Yes. So for yeah. them to discard you as if you were just some type of contracted worker, once again, I don't know the full story. Right. But just how succinct and very emotionless that was made me feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. I've been on your side before. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's Harder. like, hold on a second. If we've developed this relationship over time and you just go, hey, by the way, we don't need you anymore. It's like, okay, fair game. If this is a job and I get paid for it, that's fine. However, the way that it was done, it's not cool, right? Mm. And probably in their mind, they're just thinking like, oh, no, it's just we, we split. Um, we just went separate ways. But there's a certain way that people don't understand, especially when it comes to talent. If you've never worked on this, the other side of the camera, you don't understand what this job entails. Right. And so when, you know, at times too, especially because since you've been at the onset of that podcast, mm. there is somewhat of an emotional investment into it. right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, I was just more than anything. I was like, yeah, I'm really happy for how long I was here for. So how long were you there for? Two years. Yeah. Wow. But so like, you started with them from the beginning? Yeah. Like before they oh. even launched. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, and you were a host for like how long? Probably what? like, uh, probably after like the fifth episode, I was like on almost Oh, every so episode. pretty much the whole time. Yeah. 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 You know, when you work a job, right? They're, yeah especially when it comes to editing and videos, there's always going to be miscommunications, yeah. especially when you're doing things over email. The nature of the business. Right? It's just how it is, right? Right, so, yeah. Like when John and I do notes, I because I know what it's like on production, I, he knows my emails. They're actually very specific. Oh, they're the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he doesn't have to think. I don't go, hey, ah, something's kind of wrong. I go, we need to fix this. This is the timestamp. This is what we do. Right? Yeah, got absolutely. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Right? Yeah, you, you, funny, you and Tim are like my favorite to work with in terms of notes because like you are very concise and know what you want and it's very informative. And then Tim is just like, this is good. <laughs> 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 so it's just like easy, super easy. Imagine if like you, me and Pat, we've been doing this podcast and you know, it's fun with you guys, right? And then suddenly I just go, hey, don't come on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. But then maybe you <laughs> might come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, no, oh, that fuck. is kind of like they were like, well, if you're ever in town, you know, I'm like, I live here. <laughs> <laughs> like we're in group chat, bro. Yeah. What are you talking about? It's like, bro, what? <laughs> oh, that's fucking rude, yo. Who are these people, man? <laughs> that is rude. Hey, man, whenever you back in town, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm from this town. You live in my back house, man. <laughs> you're my brother-in-law. <laughs> We're, we're actually kind of related now. <laughs> I live in your house. <laughs> that is fucking kind of crazy, though. Yeah, a little bit. A little we bit. have the same cell phone bill. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, almost a, damn near 100 episodes. And then they had wow. like a they had like a big event for celebrating their 100 episodes. And some fan messaged me was like, you were invited to this, right? And I was like, <gasps> I didn't even hear about this until you sent this to me. <sighs> They still think you live out of state, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like John's in Arizona, bro. <laughs> yeah, for real. He can't. And then you're just, you're in one of their videos just getting water out the fridge. I'm still here. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, John. <laughs> just blur my face. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's not John. That's yeah. not John. We that's don't not, know who that guy that's is. That's not John at all. <laughs> but that, it, it, it kind of sucks that way, you know. I, hey, dude, who needs them, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Wine and weed is a terrible combination. Yeah. That's, that's what fair. I think. I'm saying it, dude. <laughs> who are these people? I don't know who they are. <laughs> it's a dumb combination. Just yeah. do one or the other. I mean, if you're wondering why John's did. not there, now you guys know. Yeah, right? you dude. Which, exclusive. <laughs> the exclusive. Exclusive <laughs> deal. Hey, man, it's good to get that shit off your chest. Yeah, bro. Somebody's got to talk some bit. shit. Dude. All right? <laughs> nah, I mean, but like I said, I think it's just really a, a position of just, I, I, I think that's why even for me, before, before I even started hiring people for editing, I wanted to know what editing takes, right? Just it's because hard. there's yes, it's there's two sides <laughs> to it, right? There's one side where 
their editors are very underappreciated in the camera people. And there's other people who are really good at what they do, but they lie about their job a lot. They go, oh, this is going to take six days. And I'm like, no, it's not. I do your job. <laughs> you know, and I actually ran into that once or twice, right? But those are just piece of shit people. Usually it's the other way around. That's what I do, too. Right? How I get my video <laughs> editing class. <laughs> I, I just hate. learned how to do Adobe Premiere. So I'll oh, get yeah, someone yeah, to edit, bro. Oh, I got you, sure, dog. Dude. Yeah, I just learned how to use C, and it cuts the fucking video clip. That's half of it already, Pretty yeah. cool, man. That's Pretty how he good. does personal training. He goes, <laughs> he goes, hey, guys, yeah, before I take you on as a client, it's going to take you 17 years to lose this 10 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to sign you for a 17-year contract. <laughs> and I want those payments bi-monthly, every day on the hour and it's in me it's in me and Mario <laughs> because, because all me as your trainer it's pretty good yeah. it's a pretty good deal <laughs> that's exactly what he I'm does I'm tempted <laughs> yeah, so when, I, when I would hire some editing people like I remember there was a guy and it was to do my vlogs right and my vlogs were super easy there wasn't any random cuts and I could edit my vlogs honestly and at the time it was just me talking and then visual text and that was it and he goes yeah these videos would take about four days I was like okay come on, guys. there's no color correction on this <laughs> right it's a single shot just jump cuts. And I'm telling you where the jump cuts are. It's going to take you four days. He goes, yeah, it's going to cost like a thousand for video. I'm like, <sighs> come on. It takes me 20 minutes to edit this video. <laughs> like, but I kept on running into this and it's like, and I was going to pay somebody to do the, by the way, it 20 minute edit, like, and I think a videographer for, for the simple videos, it's like 35 an hour. It's like average rate. Right. And I was going to pay 150 for video per video. And it takes 20 wow. minutes to edit. That's crazy. Right? And it's like, why am I even having this conversation with you? Right? And he was like, oh, I got to go. In the I was like, you don't have to go into After Effects. And I'm like literally writing to him. And the <laughs> guy does doing the job for him. Yeah. And I'm like writing back to him and just because he didn't know I was editing my own video. Yeah. 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 You know? Just taking, taking you for a ride. Exactly. Yeah. And it was just so Man. fucking obnoxious. But yeah, I think the, like, the important thing when it comes to work is like, if you understand what somebody else goes through, it actually allows you to have a better relationship with them because now you're not arguing about bullshit stuff. Right? So for, ex for example, if John says like, hey, setup is going to take this amount of time. I know it's going to take that amount of time because I know what it's like to set up, mm -hmm. right? And because also too, it's like it's not like when John sets things up, I'm just go, John, handle it. And I go my own way. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I can help it up and get faster, it doesn't take a lot for me to go ahead and just help him set up even though I'm paying for it, right? Because number one, if we're a team, I want people to be happy. Having a happy team is the best part about production. When people are unhappy, you get shit work 24 yeah. fucking seven. It seems mm -hmm. like that's the distinction, right? It's like, I, it seems like a lot of times in the field, like people kind of dehumanize the people that work behind yeah. the cameras and all that shit. And it's kind of whack. I see that a lot. You know, did you know that fucking John lost like a gajillion pounds? Yeah. Good for did, you, I did keto. I was like almost 400 pounds. And Good then, for like, you, thank dude. Thank you, buddy. Thank you That's very much. Dope. We met each other at our fattest. Wow. <laughs> we That's both fair. met each other at our fattest points of our lives. Yeah, dope. yeah. After he started like walking all the time, I was like, yeah, it might be time. I was like, David inspired me to like, because we were doing Send Foods and I was He's like. very inspiring, this guy. Yeah, man. And bro, I remember at that time, but we would be training and he'd be like, Fuck, I gotta go do send foods. I gotta eat 7,000 calories today. <laughs> <laughs> we ate you have to try hard. everything, dude. Yeah. Imagine having a food show and trying to diet, bro. That's oh the my worst. God. Bro, since pandemic, I've gained 20 pounds. Yeah, so I definitely gained. Pounds. I've been, I everybody was, did. I was like 205, I'm like 225 right now, which, you know, I'm still substantially lighter than I was before. Yeah. But it, I, I, I do feel the effects of gaining that 20 pounds. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little, it kind of <sighs> sucks. Yeah. You know, definitely, I, I, um, definitely. less I pep in my step. Yes. <laughs> like when you're, when you're bigger, whether you gain five or 10 pounds, when you're in that obese, cause I was 300, he was like 400. Whether you gain five or 10 pounds, you still feel like shit either way. It all feels mm. the same. Yeah. yeah. When you start getting healthier and you make better life choices, when you gain 20 pounds, you can feel it. Yeah. Definitely. And it's so odd. Yeah. Like just moving stuff in here the other day and I was just lifting heavy things. I'm like, this feels a lot heavier than it should. And I'm breathing a lot heavier than I should be. And it started like freaking me out a little bit. Yeah. And then I started, you know, looking at the stuff that I'm eating. And obviously I've been stressed out because I'm moving and yeah. going through all this stuff. Yeah. Like having your health slip feels terrible. And if you if you never had that before, it's only because you haven't been healthier. Yeah. Is what exactly. I realized. Yeah. Yeah. I had no basis. You to don't be. know what the <laughs> other side is and what it because a lot of times too, it's like, bro, you see some of these fitness people, like fitness people don't do a good job of this either, right? Like when they're trying to send a message about like health and wellness and their fucking shirts off all the time and they're all like in really good shape, like all you need to do is do this. And of course you're like, yeah, right, asshole. <laughs> like, of course we think that. 
because they don't come from it from like a like a regular person's point of view right. a lot of times and it alienates a lot of people but like kind of what you said too sometimes people are trying so hard to get their life together as far as like their fitness stuff but they have so many like they have so many other things on their plate that requires more of their attention yeah like you moving you having big life events a lot of times you're not in a good place to start dieting or or focusing on your health. You could do a little bit to kind of maintain, but I think a lot of people get that in their head. They're like, oh, I'm a failure. I can't get this going. And a lot of times it's just because you're not in the right place to be able to start making those changes. Yeah. And it, it's really <laughs> interesting to see that, especially with like with some of my clients too. Like sometimes they just struggle because like one of my clients, she she has a new job and she works nights. And oh, like shit, graveyard that's shifts. Hard, and I'm dude. like, bro, good. Like it's going to be, t it could be done, but it's, you have a lot more things like think about how how much effort and cognitive effort it took for you to like start yeah. doing your weight loss stuff. For, for you were you bigger your whole life yes yeah i i at my lightest i like weight less than i did in freaking like middle school oh, really yeah i was always i was already like 200 in middle school really yeah well do you know why you were so big like, uh, I mean, I know it's like a really yeah. obscure question. I know no. why I was big, you know? Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I uh, I definitely ate a lot, you know, and uh, ate a lot of rice. And I just didn't, I didn't, like, think about it, you know? I just, yeah. like, ate, a, and that was my favorite thing to do, you know? Hell yeah. You know why? <laughs> yeah, dude. Food doesn't yell at you. Yeah. It's food true. doesn't call you fat. Yeah. yeah. It just makes you feel it good. It makes you feel Makes great. you happy. It yes. Makes, it puts you in the happy place of, like... Because food is so like nostalgic yeah. and it's so connected to memory and, exactly. and comfort, you know? Did you ever exactly. have like a self-esteem issues because of your weight or were you just like, I'm just the big guy, John? Yeah, def I, def I, I, I like to say that I didn't, but I definitely did. <laughs> um, but, you know, after there was like a, a middle school was definitely like me figuring in that out a lot. But by like ninth grade, I was like, oh, I'm, just, I'm the big guy. Everyone's just called me Big John. You know, I'm like, that's my identity. And then, um, I don't know, after I started losing the weight because... Like at night, like I was just like getting chest pains and I was mm. like, is this my heart? Like, do I need to start worrying about <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah. You yeah. know? And I was just like, I don't want, I think I should not worry about this. And also, you know, I'd like to fucking get laid. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, and you know what? Here's the thing too. Isn't it kind of crazy too? When I had to think about this when I was losing weight originally was how being fat became my identity. Yeah. Right? Like, Absolutely. If I wasn't fat, I wasn't David. Yeah. And I couldn't separate the two. Mm. It was just always, it felt synonymous with each other yeah it's always fat david it's never yeah. david is david and he happens to be fat yeah you fair know? yeah there's the same noun yeah and so every time i would try to lose weight it's like oh i don't need to lose weight like i'm this is who i am i'm i'm fat david yeah you know i'm either funny because i'm fat or i'm yeah. funny because of these things right and i started to associate this negative thing about me that you know and that's this is how i feel about being you know extremely overweight is that it's some it's a very bad habit right and i started identifying with it it's mm -hmm. like no, nah, this is who I am. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Why am I trying to change something that's a part of me? Exactly. But the things that you can't deny, like for example, you had chest pains. I had yeah. heartburn every fucking night. Right. You know? Every night when I would go to sleep, mm -hmm. I would wake up in the middle of the night and then I would have acid reflux. Same. Mm -hmm. I thought that was normal. I thought it was yeah. normal. I was like, dude, yeah. diarrhea every day is normal. <laughs> <laughs> My nightly tums. Yeah. yeah. Normalized diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. I was out of Santa Monica with yeah. the fucking sign. <laughs> You're so brave. <laughs> <laughs> Solid shitters are fucking racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Solid shitters. You're COVID deniers too, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I started like making these fucking excuses. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. supposed to be this big, you know, heartburn or whatever. Well, I remember just losing that first 30 pounds and then uh, my uh, sleep apnea went away. Yeah. That sleep apnea was killing me, dude. That shit literally scared the fucking shit out of me. And I didn't know that I was holding my breath. And I, I knew I had it a little bit in college because my buddy Tony, shout outs to Tony Vu, that's the homie. He recorded me sleeping and he was like, bro, I think you're dying. Yeah, dude, that's scary. Yeah, and he that's was like, super scary. he goes, you stop. Because he was my uh, dorm mate. He slept in the same room. He goes, you stop breathing at night. I was like, you, you, for reals? And he showed me a recording and I went... And it was like that for 30 seconds. And then. Holy shit. But it wasn't even then at that point, it wasn't even a huge concern. But. Um, Been I, there. Yeah. It, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. I almost smothered myself. Like, <laughs> once Damn, I was like, I like, dude. yeah, like I, you know, when you flip and your face is on the pillow, like I just remember like, like dreaming, like it was like my, like my, my vivid dream was going like fading and fading away. And I was just Whoa. like, what's going on? And then like, 
I like jolted awake and I was like, if I didn't wake up for another like three minutes, Holy I feel shit. like I would have like suffocated. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. So for you, like what was the like continuing motivating factor for you to continue to lose weight? Because you were what, 400 pounds you said? Yeah. I mean, you because you after you lost the first hundred, you continued even further than that. Yeah. That's a oh, lot yeah, too. for yeah. sure. That's yeah. I, I set a goal to myself. Like I was just like, I just want to I want to go until I'm like healthy you know what i mean until yeah. like i'm normal so to speak and so like i was just like let me just see how far i can go i would love to be under 200 for the first time in my life you know and then i got there um but uh yeah it was it was great it was it was just more of like a i i think the i had the goal to be to get to that weight like uh, already you mm. know what i mean so yeah. when i was at 300 i was like okay great you know i'm not there yet yeah um and my, my mom was like you're losing weight really fast like are you sure this is like like you should go to a, get your you know get get a checkup and i went to the doctor and i was like i lost 100 pounds in like five months and he's like awesome i was like oh okay <laughs> cool. sweet yeah yeah I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna keep going then. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna take your blood pressure. I'm gonna do all this stuff. And I was like, all right. What are some of the like lifestyle, like, or I'll say this? What are some of the no, uh, the habits that you guys seen that you guys changed from when you guys were at your heaviest to kind of mm. where you guys lost? Because mm. both of you guys lost a crazy amount of like weight. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm curious to see because I talk about it with some of my clients, and I think other people don't really talk about this enough. But the lifestyle changes that you've had or the, the the quality of life changes from when you were heavier to when you lost about 100 or 60 pounds in your case. Like, what are the, some of the differences you guys noticed? For me, the biggest thing is how I view food. <clears throat> okay. That's key, bro. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Food, food to me was just, it was a hobby. It was fun, right? Yeah. And then I started looking at food as an energy source, right? It's Very like, different. What, what is the purpose of food and what is it supposed yeah. to do for you, right? Fair. Why do people say that you need fiber? Why do people say you need X amount of vitamins? Why mm -hmm. is protein important? Why yeah. are fats important? Yes. And then when you when you have this knowledge and you understand food, because I had, you know, 20, at the time, 27 years of bad habits, good habits weren't a habit for me. So, <clears throat> which a lot of people, <clears throat> I think as human beings, when you, when you typically just have a, a regular balanced diet, it's just naturally, it's this habit's already in you. You already yeah. know what to eat. I don't have that. So now I have to actually learn it. Yeah. And so now and develop I, it. Yeah. yeah. And so now when I look at a plate of food, yeah, there are times that I just eat whatever the fuck I want. But now when I feel bad when I eat the food, I know why, right? Whether it's excess salt, excess sugar or whatever, I understand why I feel certain ways. And so the way I look at food now, it just changed a lot. It goes, oh, do I need to have, like when I'm eating this dish, right? So for example, and I just thought about this today, um, <clears throat> JK, when I was on JK News, they always took, a t took us to Vegas. And we used to eat at this dry aged steak place uh, in, um, I think it was like old New York or some shit. I forgot what casino it is. But these delicious dry aged steaks, right? And the first thing that I would do, and because once again, we didn't, you know, broke people always go big, right? <laughs> we ordered like a 20 ounce ribeye. Right. And then I would order the mac and cheese, the potato on the side and whatever. And then maybe I'll have some broccoli. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, right. But what I look I, I was literally thinking about that in the car today, thinking about it and thinking of how I would have switched that plate up now. I would have gotten that 20 ounce steak and I would have split it with two people with two people. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strategy. <laughs> right. Having yeah. a plan. Because right. when I was eating that shit, I was eating it for the broke person inside me. Yeah. And like, because I like the food. For real, cleaning your plate, finishing your plate, yes. like making sure you, there's nothing left. Like a lot of that stuff can, those are strategies that we don't think about, but we're taught as we were kids and we live by that. Like I used to go out to dinner with my girl all the time and she would stop eating her food and I would finish my plate and I eat her plate. I kept doing that over and over. And the next thing you know, slowly gaining more weight, slowly gaining more weight without me even realizing because it's a, such a habit, like you talked about, like such a bad habit that we don't realize that there's a cost to at the yeah. end of the day. And even yesterday when I was eating McDonald's, I was going to go to McDonald's and I'm like, cool, I'm going to order a filet o fish a McChicken, fries, a Coke, Fire. and 20 piece Fire. nuggets. <laughs> Fire. Hell yeah. When I, when I sat there, I remember I said to myself, I was like, are you going to the electric chair tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, bro, but but like stopping ourselves in that moment, like, do I need this much food? I'm gonna have acid What's going reflux, on, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I was literally in the car thinking, what's what are you doing? 
And Even the guy on death row is like, that's way too much. <laughs> I'm like, Listen, brother, I'm gonna die tomorrow, but fuck, yeah, that's you're crazy. Sad. <laughs> so I just got the 20 piece nugget and then a drink, and I was full. Yeah. yeah. But then I don't know why I went to wanting to get all the stuff. It's because I wanted it. But at the end of the day, if I want the filet of fish, I can get it tomorrow. Yeah. Right. I don't have to eat it all right now. Yeah. yeah. And you probably enjoy it more tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Uh, when you going off of what you're saying about the food choices, I definitely like, I never like would pick up something and look at the back for the nutrition for facts real. and stuff. But yeah. that shit is like legitimate. Like once you go down that rabbit hole, it's like, oh my God, there's a lot of shit in this. Like, yeah. There's like, what is maltodextrin? Like, yeah. <laughs> this shit good though. Yeah. <laughs> How was the keto experience for you? Oh, uh, I mean, for me, it was definitely jarring just because, you know, like, Carbs, rice, and stuff is like the best. Yeah. Um. But I <laughs> oh. did what I did like about the keto is that you can eat until satiated, and that like, and it's still fine. So I'm like a big like, uh, I'm not. I, I don't. I want to eat until I'm not hungry anymore. So I combine that with like fasting, and it just it just fit my particular lifestyle so good. Yeah. So yeah. important, man. You were yeah. only two of like thirty people that I know that did keto that it worked for. Yeah. Oh really? Because I, I think it's very difficult to do keto, right? Because yeah. if it's hard to do a, a just a traditional healthy diet, fair, keto's even more strict than that because you're still Less calorie options. restricting. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Although now there's like so many like like just uh different brands and like in just in Walmart and shit. Like I'm like, wow, there's a keto version of this now. Dude, keto everything. Yeah, it's That's crazy. like the hottest shit on the market yeah. right now. Everybody wants to do keto because it's like they try to sell at, sell it as like oh you get to eat all the bacon and eggs you want yeah. like i read at the beginning and that's what it was yeah, but yeah, at sure. the end of the day like i used to always like shit on keto but at the same time though for a lot of people it does work like it like it's, it's just a, it's a diet every diet has its utility but exactly you, what it, like it comes down to is what's something that gonna it's gonna fit your lifestyle and then you could adhere to for an extended period of time exactly yeah i think keto was originally for some it was for a specific ailment right Oh boy, I don't know. They were, like doctors were using it for people with something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it yeah. was like tremors or, or obesity. Or, <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't originally to for like the dieting purpose. It was for it was for a specific like I want to say disease or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's what they used it for. And they found out that it actually helped people lose weight. Oh wow. Yeah. Which was kind of crazy because uh, I know keto is fucking hard because Did you try keto? I tried keto and I couldn't do it. Yeah, like keto's it, rough, bro. It uh, it made me lose my fucking mind. Yeah. Like I, I was, yeah. I was going to go fucking insane. Yeah, and then I couldn't get past the uh, the migraines. Oh, so that's just like that's just you're not doing your electrolytes right. Oh, like really? Migraines. A lot yeah. Of times, yeah, that's what people call keto flu. I never got that shit because I I did so much research before choosing it. And they're like, if you don't want the keto flu, you just got to do these three things. And I was like, okay, oh, really? Dude, yeah. You know, most people like I have. It's crazy how many times I have like conversations with people where they always talk about like I have like migraines, headaches all the time, and it really is the fact that you're not having enough electrolytes. Yeah, and, bro, my Potassium. girl dog, she looks at me and she's like, oh, I got a headache. I got a headache, and I'm like, well. We were, we were drinking a little bit <laughs> last night, known to dehydrate you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she still has this migraine. And I was like, hey, you drink some electrolytes. And she's like, no, nah, it's okay. I'm just keep drinking That's water. That's for fucking <laughs> pussies. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, damn, bro. Lance like crave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, athletes drink this, yo. Yeah. But a lot of times it really is because like people think it's just water. But the other side of the equation of hydration is like electrolytes. Make yeah. sure you have the minerals. And Absolutely. All that stuff to help you, you know, stay keep all that because you stuff. don't have that in the keto diet like you have to supplement that because you're not getting it naturally what are things that you have to supplement in keto it was it's mainly just potassium and electrolytes and just as it, but if you're like only eating bacon and eggs you're gonna have a bad time you know yeah, you need to like rough. diversify oh, <laughs> you know means, yeah. yeah definitely like i found my replacement the, the key was i found my replacements for like bread and rice like i was like oh this is my go-to for that instead and what I would, would you just, use for bread so for bread they actually have this uh <laughs> It's this thing called fathead dough, which is like, it's been a while since I've made it, but it's basically a cream, it's cream cheese, mozzarella, you mix it together. You can like make it malleable, make it to a pizza. There was like so many weird things like chaffles, which is just cheese and egg, but like in the form of what like- the a bread. Yeah. They made every combination, dude. Yeah. Every it was combination. Like, but how I, did it taste though? For you know what? I was like, uh, uh, if you did a side-by-side -side comparison, it's, it's no contest. Yeah. And like, I've had a bunch of keto breads and like, I was, I was a big chaffle fan. Cause like there's just that texture. You can just make anything yeah. out of the texture. What is it? Is electrolytes or salt? It's it's a combination salt. of uh, minerals and then just vitamins that you need, like vitamin okay. A, vitamin B, like all that stuff. So it, it's it's 
you just need all of it. You need magnesium, salt, you know, all that other good shit. Whatever, you know. Yeah, this guy's no shit. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. For example, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but that isn't true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse and it can help you avoid those lows. Many people think therapy is for so-called crazy people, but therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to control them, not avoid them. BetterHelp is so awesome. BetterHelp, BetterHelp, it's all about that mental health. That's the theme song. I love it so much. Whenever I need better help, it's in my back pocket. I can schedule uh, online therapy sessions and talk to my counselor whenever I need him. It is, has, and always will be amazing. If you haven't tried better help, you have to try it. Give it a go. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Better help is a cus is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Genius Brain listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Genius. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Genius. It's, it's like a little it's a ABC. You know, zinc, potassium, yeah, rainbow flavin, yeah, rainbow yeah. flavin is in there. Yeah, yeah something like that. A little cold red, a little <laughs> mountain <laughs> red, <laughs> mountain dew UV light. Honestly, <laughs> if you want to stay hydrated, just drink Mountain Dew Red, bro. <laughs> Let's get it, dude. <laughs> Easy shit. That's you know why I think keto is gonna be hard for like Filipino people. By the way, all your food is brown. Like it's like you're gonna let them talk to you like that. Yeah. <laughs> Make no, sure right that's like, yeah, make sure, yeah, the, like, yeah, make sure the food is the color of our mothers. Like that's like it's Holy brown, shit. it's delicious, it's high in fat, high in carbs, and I fucking love it. What's dude. your favorite Filipino dish? Dino Guan. Oh wow. Damn. <laughs> and what's that? What's Fuck that? Yeah. yeah. It's it's blood blood porridge. Or yeah, it's yeah, it's um the, it, when people call it chocolate beef because it's like a really dark mm. color and it's like you don't want like kids to like be like, oh, that's blood. But when when my parents called it chocolate beef, I was like, that sounds disgusting. Yeah. Chocolate and beef, that sounds horrible. Exactly. And they're like, it's blood. And I was like, okay, now I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> that's the funny thing. Now you're talking about Describing language. it as chocolate like meat is the way to get people to eat it. Yeah. Why? Oh, yeah. Why? Like, Dinoguan is my shit, dude. Oh, so good. Really? With puto? Have you had Dinoguan and puto? What's puto? Oh, my God. In a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Some chocolate beef and it's like a rice pastry. It's like a little, you know, it's instead in lieu of rice, you you eat it with this pastry. Oh, wow. I never had it like Super that. Super good. Man. Always, so in Maui at this hotel that I used to stay at, it was like a cheap little motel. They have a fucking fire ass Filipino restaurant attached to it. Oh, hell yeah. And that restaurant serves dinner one. Oh. I ate God. that shit every day. Because a lot of people don't even make it. No, it's yeah. like it's like an in the cut kind of one. Yeah, hey, for what, sure. What about crispy pata? Oh hell yeah, dude! I love crispy pata. There is crazy enough. There's a crispy pata dinuguan. That's one of my fucking favorite. Really? Yeah. Dude, we have you had a crispy pata? Yeah. Do you like it? I love it. All right. I never let's, had it with dinuguan. That's match gonna up. be fire. Let's, let's match they up. put the little crunchy bits on top. Oh my god! I can't wait for a Filipino friend to get married because there's gonna be a whole fucking lechon there, dude. Oh Ooh. for sure. And it's so <laughs> fucking good. Dude, I don't think I've had real like Filipino food, bro. What? Like besides like Lhasa, that's the only other place <laughs> that I've actually been. A it's lot like of Filipino restaurants they have it served like kind of like Chinese fast food stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I, there's a really dope, uh, upscale. I think it's called Synagogue. I forgot Synagogue LA. I haven't been there. I think they they do upscale Filipino. Oh, food, for sure. Okay, which is really great. I heard it's fucking delicious. But, you know, for me, there's certain foods that I just prefer to have it the way that it's done. And I think, like, the upscale version is really delicious, yeah. but it doesn't hit the same spot. I've had that for you sure. You know what I mean? They do that with Korean food, too. Yeah. With this upscale, upscale it, yeah. it's delicious, but it still doesn't taste as good to me as if it was just done home. It's not hearty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something about something it, Something missing, huh? That's yeah. why, Loki, I was impressed with that Disneyland adobo. I was like, Yo, this shit tastes like my mom. Disneyland has adobo? They had pork belly, uh, like, a, a, a adobo. Over garlic fried rice. Yeah, it was for the holidays though. It was like a little oh. holiday installation thing. For it was Lunar New Year. It smelled good. Man. I was like, this looks pretty good. And that taste, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> this is legit. 
It was it was legit. Good. Yeah, it was, it was like somebody's mom made it. Yeah, and like somebody's like 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 a good version. Some people's moms make it. They're all right. <laughs> this yeah. was fucking good. He's like, not my mom. Yeah. <laughs> my mom's adobo is trash, <laughs> dude. I I like the Filipino spaghetti. But there has been variations where I get from certain people where I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's just this ketchup not, and noodles. Yeah. yeah, I was like, this is not <laughs> Filipino spaghetti. Yeah, hey, you sure. need that tomato sauce. You need banana ketchup and sugar. And that shit is a fire. Mm-hmm. Banana ketchup, dude. That's a game changer. It has man. to be oh, banana yeah. ketchup. It's not Absolutely. regular ketchup. It's fucking banana ketchup. Banana sauce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's super sweet. That's what I'm saying. Like, I... I found when you went keto, I was like, how the fuck are That's you going to do keto? Bro. <laughs> it was definitely, it was definitely. What was like your favorite food that you gave up when you were going through keto that you would think about all the time? Oh my God. Honestly, man, like just the simple like milk and cookie. Legitimately, yeah. I was like, real, right? yeah. it's like the little things that you crave yeah. on a diet because yeah. it sucks. Like it sucks yeah. while you go through it. We would be on the show, right? And we're eating stuff. I'm like, hey, John, get down on this food. And he's like, no. <laughs> I, I was so then you had to eat all of it. <laughs> <laughs> sabotage, no, bro. No. It's diet yeah. sabotage. I was like, George, you don't want this food. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fat like, boy voice, by the way. Crying. You don't want this food. <laughs> Maybe a little. Yeah. <laughs> he would not eat, and he would pick hey, off you, all bro. the carbs <laughs> and everything else, and he would just fucking eat the meat. It was crazy watching That's this willpower. guy. willpower. Yeah. Really yeah. good willpower, man. You know what I also noticed too when I cut out, um, I didn't cut out carbs, but a, 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 when I was losing a majority of the weight, the only source of carbs that I had was fruits. Yeah. Um, I just like the way it made me feel. It made me shit really good too. For sure. Yeah, yeah bro. But when I cut out a majority of- full too. The biggest thing I recognized when I cut out carbs was my joints felt good. Yeah. I felt oh. younger. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a scientific thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, but when I cut out like a lot of uh, processed sugars and that's bread the and whatever, one. my joints felt better. So I, I don't know if that's true, but maybe somebody could research anecdotally. That yeah, so, anecdotally. Yeah, sometimes they 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 can kind of find like a, a relationship, but but they, it, it doesn't really say like a lot of times people say like uh, sugar is very inflammatory, mm. but they kind of it's like a. I don't want to say it's a misinformation, but it's kind of like uh, it's we don't really have proof to show that okay. this causes that. Because people say that about red meat too, right? They say that about fucking everything. Yeah. Because <laughs> there, there's some people that like are trying to sell a certain uh, like for instance, we talk about this all the time. There's like uh, chiropractors that that kind of sell like medicinal holistic approaches to dieting sometimes, mm-hmm. and it's fine, I guess you know. But there's one guy on the internet. His name is like Peter Berg. Mm-hmm. And he goes on and he talks a lot about like how you need to, for you. The reason why you're not losing weight is because you're eating too much carbs and you're too much insulin. And a lot of the mechanisms that he uses to a, a normal person would be like, oh, that makes sense. This is really cool. But he's taking advantage of people's knowledge of those informations. And mechanistically, it's just not correct. Mm. So sometimes if you get the right guy with the right look that could talk with the right like insulin and cortisol and all these like trigger buzzwords, it could really capture an audience of like, oh, this is just what it is now. Like this is actually true. But in reality, it's like mm. kind of unfounded at least. Do you know who the liver king is? You guys know who that oh, is? Oh, the dude, the big jack dude that just eats fucking organ meat I'll all the time? I'll tell you this, I've never met a person I've hated more in my life. <laughs> <laughs> liver king is very entertaining, but he talks in third person all the time. Oh. And then also, He's he Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah. He, he, he's literally Macho he looks, Man. He looks like him. Yeah. Like almost. Oh, but damn. just not. But uh, way redder. He's yeah. really red. <laughs> Here's what I dislike about him. How come you don't talk about your liver steroids? See? He's legit on every steroid possible. He is so red and veiny. It looks like his skin's about to pop. Yeah. And he goes, this is how man ate years ago. I don't remember them injecting shit in their ass. Yeah, like ten thousand years ago. The trend that you're on, my guy, it's ridiculous. It doesn't even look like he's trying to hide it, but he never mentions that. And then he's like talking about his way of lifestyle. It's like, listen, you don't look the way you do because uh, you're eating seventeen egg yolks, raw beef, calf liver, and then a fetus. Yep. But (laughs) then, but then he never clarifies. He never really clarifies because, and then leaves his audience to think, "Wow, all I got to do is eat a bunch of organ meat." You know, take my shirt off all the time, go hiking, <laughs> fucking attach thousand pound sleds to my back and just walk to work every day. Then I'll be jacked. Yeah. But in reality, it's not true. Also, <laughs> too, it's, the stuff that people do when they when when these are like the fringe health nut people, right? Their fucking anecdotal evidence 
is not even applicable. It's stupid, but people believe it. They, he'll, he'll say some shit like this. He goes, you know, in the wild, uh, uh, bears only eat the skin of salmon and its organs, and look how strong it is. I'll tell you this, bitch. A, a bear, when it's born, will already rip your fucking face <laughs> off. It doesn't have anything to do with the but salmon. people eat it up. <laughs> yeah. Even me sometimes, dude. <laughs> Honestly, okay. he's wrong. There's, 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 there's certain guys on my YouTube ads that'll pop up. One of them is named like V Shred, and like the fitness community, everyone shits on him because everything he's saying is like nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. But to the normal people that aren't in the fitness industry, they're listening to what he's saying and is like, "Wow, this is pretty fucking fire! Like, this is sick. All I need to do is this because it's like really good marketing." But I know that it's nonsense. I know yeah. everything he's saying is stupid. But even then, I'm like. <laughs> he got he got hey, something hey, here. Hey, what if I try it? Like, like, <laughs> like what if I do get jacked? Maybe this like, is the reason why I'm not getting these gains. Like bro. dudes, like <laughs> these got dudes point. always for some reason they always somehow bring it back to a fucking lion in yeah. the safari. People love that shit. <laughs> what what is that? Because it's the evolutionary, like there's like a and and like I guess when people argue and they use this as a it's a nature uh fallacy to nature or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's like any time that it's natural, this must be good for you. Like the reason why people think stevia is better for you than like aspartame is because they think, oh, stevia is from plants. But in reality, aspartame is like the safer hey, ingredient. Hey, poisonous mushrooms also come from the earth. <laughs> so how about you shove that in your fucking Bro, mouth? There's some people on like YouTube that are like, you know, there's arsenic in rice. This is why you shouldn't eat rice. It's poison for your body. Download my fucking 14 day juice cleanse. And it's like, yeah, because it's like. This much, dude. It's not going to fucking kill you, bro. I think fucking apples have arsenic, too. Yeah, apples have arsenic, but it's dose-dependent. Yeah, <laughs> we're okay. And by the way, Japanese people live longer than everybody to the point where it's obnoxious. And all they do is eat rice. Fair. J Japan has like, the <laughs> most amount of centennials. For real. And they got fucking bombed with a radioactive bomb. Yeah, and they're still <laughs> chilling. And they're chilling. Rice combated it, bro. You know what? Exactly. <laughs> rice combated it. Just like, it. you know when you stick fucking uh, a phone into rice and it absorbs the water? Guess what fucking rice does to fucking radioactive material? It absorbs Whoa. it, bro. Exactly. And really good sushi, too. Yeah, shout out to my <laughs> Japanese people, dude. They in are, Terrace House. I, yeah. I want, they're like, you know what? Rice will kill you. And just one Japanese put it, I don't think so. <laughs> That's all I got to do. I live for a thousand years. <laughs> thousand year old guy with a long fucking beard and then everyone's gonna be like no that's big rice yeah. talking dude it's big pharma big rice it's the political agenda bro i'm so sick of that shit dude leave rice alone i think rice is perfectly fine it's, Yo, it's all about rice, moderation bro. yeah just eat rice dude yeah, i'll tell you this most people don't get fat off of rice yeah it's rice with cheeseburgers <laughs> yeah pizza you know exactly. the big hitters bro like right because you know? I, I think for me too like Rice always satiates me. Yeah. It feels fucking good. And there's no problem with it. You know, at the end of the day, like nobody ever talks about like portions, mm -hmm. right? They, they eat like X amount of food and they go, this, this food is terrible for you. Well, nobody told you to eat 17 pizzas and nobody told you to eat a pound of rice with this much vegetables. Mm -hmm. So for me, looking at the plate, now that I learned how to figure out what's on my plate and how much I should eat of it, it's just completely different. Yeah. I used to eat like fucking 12 tacos. Yeah. It's like, maybe you should have just ate, I don't know. I used to four. eat, like like you, you said, like I was going to die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I still do that. Like sometimes like there's times where if I'm not being careful and I'm watching TV and I'm a little high or something, I will eat my body weight in ice cream. Hey, man, yesterday mm -hmm. I was full, but I drove by a place and they said I had a pastrami burger. I was like, my body need that. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah. yeah. Like the things that like you kind of just, you convince yourself that you need sometimes. Like my girl, bro. She she can have her favorite dessert in front of her, but after she's full, she won't eat anything Denzel. else. Yeah. yeah, and she's an anomaly. That's a normal person. Though. Most people aren't like that though. That's Mariel. She'll eat and she goes, "I'm done." And I'm like, "Fucking stupid." Yeah, there's still food there. <laughs> what do you mean you're done? <laughs> Clear your plate, yeah. idiot. What if tomorrow fucking there's no more beef? <laughs> What if tomorrow there's the pig doesn't exist anymore? You know what that is? That's I fucking you not being grateful, dude. Yeah. Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. I'm always, gratitude. every time before I eat, I fucking get on my knees and I bow and I pray. <laughs> I go, thank you. Oh. <laughs> hey, every time, let me tell you something. If you bow to your food before you eat it, it makes you look really cool. <laughs> and it tastes way better, bro. Yes, thank you very much. I do it with the Japanese. Oh, yes. Rub it. Amen. <laughs> hey, but this guy, how much weight did you lose? At my peak, probably like almost 
200 pounds that's basically wow, yeah bro. that's yeah. pretty nuts it that's was, awesome was crazy are you yeah, thinking man. about like diving back in again or you feel yeah. like i'm chilling right now no i'm definitely not chilling no. <laughs> uh, yeah i'm definitely like trying to dive back into it but i'm trying to like do it not as crazy just because i'm starting off at a different place right but i also am trying to get more active because like i did not focus on doing like yeah. anything fitness whatsoever yeah, i just yeah. did the diet and i was like this is already hard enough like <laughs> no but honestly that's a great approach yeah. people try to do too much at once and then they end up like most of the time too it's like we're gonna get your most bang for your buck is fixing your nutrition if you just mm. focus on that for a little bit like you did that too david like yeah. you focus on that for a really long time and then you started adding physical activity yeah, yeah when yeah. you saw fit and i think that's a really good idea man that's how you just do it it's low and slow my lovely brain farts this podcast is brought to you by purple baby if you don't know already purple has been sponsoring this podcast for a very long time not only because it's such a great relationship because i really do love my purple mattress and i'm telling you i cannot remember a time where i slept just as good as i do right now and every time i travel i miss my bed so i, I miss my lady too but i actually miss my bed the most there is nothing in this world that feels as good as my purple mattress. And if you're thinking that, you know what, I have a bed right now. Why would I want to spend more money on a bed? Because you don't understand that you sleep for a huge chunk of your life. And if you're going to sleep, it should be something you look forward to every night. And I love my purple. I'm not just saying that. It's literally the best bed I've ever slept on. They have the gel flex grid, which keeps you cool. It's very supportive on your shoulders, neck, and back. And no matter what way you sleep, it's going to be comfortable. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash brain 10 and use code brain 10 for a limited time. You can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash brain 10 code brain 10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more purple.com slash brain 10 promo code brain 10 terms apply. Well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the genius brain podcast. Oh, wow. Fucking fun ass conversation talking yeah. about John losing the weight. And I'll tell you, man, like I, I always like watching people succeed in like their health endeavors because it also kind of motivates you, right? Awesome. What's right. cooler than that? Yeah. There's nothing cooler than because that. Because you get to see because I feel like you know, losing weight for a lot of people who have tried multiple times, it almost seems impossible. It's fucking hard, man. Yeah. And if you don't have the right support and you don't have the right piece, it can make it almost damn near Dude, impossible. Just do the liver king. Just eat raw meat. Just eat raw meat, bro. Yeah, you're doing just it wrong. Eat raw meat. It doesn't matter. Liver do king. trend. <laughs> yeah. And then, do, then you're pretty much good to go. Yeah, do all the steroids yeah. and you're fine. Yeah, bro. John, where can they find you? Uh, I'm at, at John Ross 93 on all the platforms. Yep. Yeah. Subplot Entertainment if you want to hire them oh, yeah. for any of your like video needs, whether it's sketches, podcasts, whatever you want, hit up Subplot Entertainment. They got your back. They shoot everything for me and Tim. Fucking amazing. Nick, you can find Nick the Ear at Nick the Ear at Nick the Ear at Nick the Ear. Still working on his po uh, his fucking website. Oh, it's, 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 it's going to be up. NTETraining.com. But when is this coming out? Uh, it's going to come out. Well, what am I saying? What? Today? Yeah. yeah so I don't a know. couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. It, the the website is going to be up. Check it out. NTETraining.com. Get your fitness on. Get healthy. Uh, what other things can I say? It, it's your life. Take control of it. Yeah. Be in front of the wheel. If you guys want a free fat loss guide, I have a free fat loss guide on my website at ntetraining.com. And you just download it and it's free for you. That's, That's right. right. I've been using it. it and I've gained so much weight. It's you gained too much. Actually. <laughs> I got to actually change a couple things. <laughs> Work First, in progress. let's start with butter. <laughs> like it's a baking recipe. <laughs> Julian Child. Yeah. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.